families and friends to come to KMBS to have a blood test and also at the same time. Especially by the tech. So today topic is on immune system. Uh, the flu is getting um, to a lot of people here. I guess uh, early this morning I noticed a lot of people having running snow, running slow, or running nose in a way. So today we're going to talk about immune system. Before I go a bit further, immune system to a lot of people they are kind of so we call it a little bit uh, we call it strange. Why? Because when you're having a healthy immune system, you don't know it. If you're not having a good immune system, you also don't know it. When you know it, when you fall sick. That's the point. A lot of people do not know much about the immune system. When only they fall sick, they realize the immune is not so strong. So I'm going to bring you some basic information. What other things can cause you to fall sick? Okay, first thing for come first. Uh, we all know uh, the World Cup is ended. Okay, I'll bring that a bit earlier. 2016, actually, the 16 is missing at the very end there because of the projector not seeing the whole slide. So, 2016, we have this Olympic, right? So, what happened in the Olympic? We all know a lot of athletes, but one thing happened during that year, maybe you are not so aware of it, is actually this called Zika virus. Mm, are you aware of Zika virus? No. Okay, why? Because it happened in Rio, mm, but not in Malaysia. Malaysia have Aedes and have dengue every single year and this is called virus bought by mosquito um, but how bad is this virus? we're going to see in Malaysia something much more closer to us H1N1 okay? where is H1N1? it's very end there actually it's H1N1, local transmission of H1N1 have you heard about H1N1 before? or oh, it's something more closer to us because it happened in Malaysia and for that year, this year it happened in 2009 you can see that in Malaysia we have 825 cases. After that, 700 of them recovered. How about the rest? They passed away. They died. So when people die, only people will be more cautious. So what is the sexual one? Anyone knows? Bird flu, mm, not really bird flu. <laughs> actually, it's swine flu. Okay, swine flu is actually what we call uh, related to the pigs, lah. But in Malaysia, it's a little bit sensitive using that word, so they call them H1N1 virus instead of swine flu. As you can see, if you look back in history, 2009 in Malaysia we have 800 old cases, 100 old people passed away. But you look back from 2005 to 2009, for the past five years before 2009, what happened? There's only 12 cases and one death. They increased to 800 over in Malaysia. Within a short five years, what happened? What to let you know is the virus are getting stronger and stronger. At the same time, our immune system is getting weaker and weaker. Mm, that's the point I want to bring up. A lot of people think that their immune system is quite strong, especially the young generations or younger, 20 and below, or 20 to 30 young adults. They think their immune system is quite healthy. But how healthy are you. So I'm going to share with you today a lot of incidents that happened in Malaysia or around the world related to virus and bacteria. Another one, this is called Nipah virus. Okay, quite some time ago. Happened in the year 1998-99 where my 105 people died. So what is this Nipah virus? I'm not so sure about you. That year I'm kind of quite happy uh, because that year we have another very nice cuisine, okay? Uh, very nice food happened in Malaysia, just out of nowhere, just appeared. What do you mean by that? Last time we had this bakute, right? That year happened to be a new dish we call chikute. Have you heard about it? Mm, because that year, 1998, nobody dared to eat any pork. Mm, they go for chicken version. Mm, but what happens? Because all people know that eating pork will die, eating pork will die. Yes. Mm, swine food eating pork also will die. That happens to 2009. But what happens right now? Mm, anyone have taken pork for the last week? For the past last week? Pork. Anything related with pig. Okay? Ham, everything. Luncheon meat. Oh. Are you not afraid of Nipah? Are you not afraid of H1 Island? Swine flu? No. That's why people try to forget. Mm, when there's a crisis, oh, everyone's so sad, so afraid. Don't take anything related to pork. But now, nobody cares, mm, because no one died. It's okay, mm, no big deal, but today I'm going to share with you, this is only one of it that you will be extra careful. There are other things you need to be extra careful, um, be extra careful too. What do you mean by that? All these invisible killers, we call them. Okay, virus is only one of it. 
I'm going to share a few more with you, their siblings. The first one can be found in this bundle of lychee. Um, you don't see much here, okay? If you soak in water, all these fruits and stuff, if you remove the fruits, you'll see the water is a little bit dirty, like anyway. Some sediments there. When you enlarge it, you can see that something kind of beige color, yellowish there. And you enlarge it a little bit, you will see, you can see some maggots. Mm -hmm. Okay, a lot of people think that, oh, no big deal, lah, this is a worm. Um, and people won't buy vegetables, they won't find vegetable worms. Why? Organic. Um, no pesticide. So worms don't cause you any harm, really. So what the food contains a lot of worms, besides vegetables, one more thing. Chocolate. Okay, let's see. There's a worm there. Alive. I'm going to zoom in so you can see that there, that's the worm. So if you if you like chocolate, especially with nuts, the chances of having worm in there is very, very high. You can see that? Probably there. Hello, good morning. Mm. Oh, wait, that down there. A lot of people think that, oh, okay, I don't like chocolate, so no big deal. I don't eat vegetables a lot, I don't eat salad a lot, so I, everything I eat is cooked. So shouldn't be any worms in there. Are you 100% sure? You are going to see something well cooked, still contain worms. What is it? In the news. KFC. The fast food chain Kentucky's fried chicken has come under the scanner in Kerala after a family reportedly found worms in their fried chicken pieces. The incident was reported from an outlet in Tiruvannamalai. As you can see, this is the fried KFC, and this is the worm. Still alive. And some seized chicken pieces were allegedly as much as five months old. The outlet has been temporarily shut, and the other outlets are being inspected. So you can see here, mm, worms is going to be quite deadly. Are you sure? Worms now won't cause much of a problem. So here we're going to have a first question for today. We all dislike worms, right? We feel a mm, little bit nauseating the moment we see your food having worms there, right? So my question for today, if you have an apple, and then you have a bite, and then you feel something strange taste in your mouth, then you have a look at the apple again, you'll find worms in there. So my question, how many worms you see will be the most uh, unacceptable? You want to have your bite, you have bite the apple, then you notice there are worms in there. So basically how many worms in there will be the one that is most shocking? One is enough. <laughs> okay. Wow, so, okay, any more than that? A bit more brave, daring? Half. Half, yes, I prefer that answer. Uh, why? The remaining half is already in your mouth. Okay, so that's the most uh, worst thing happens in your life. So worms, if one goes in your body, it will replicate, it will multiply, something like this. This is the intestine. This is a colonoscopy. When you scope your colon, you can see that all the colon wall is all filled with worms crawling in there. Um, so go in one, and then you have thousands or millions. That's why worms is actually no big deal if only one. But you multiply in the body, it's a different case altogether. You can see the whole walls of the intestines are filled with worms. Mm. And then people start asking, Charles, yeah, I can see that the worms yeah, are very irritating, okay? Oh. So, what is normal happened? It will cause me any disease or we're going to die from that? Not really, uh, because worms will not have that uh, strong effect on killing you on the spot. But it will grow. So like humans, we eat our food, we grow in height, in weight, right? Worm will also grow. So if a worm happens inside your stomach, living there, how big can it grow? Hmm? How long, how big? No idea, right? I'll give you an example. This is the worm that I can grow in the stomach. Uh, the length of it is roughly around um, chopstick length, okay? This is the ringworm there, this is the head. Hello, is it? Um, I'm big now. Um, from a tiny one, tiny small one, you can jab me now, I'm being a big worm already. This is how I'm going to go. So you feel your stomach, the colon, tickling, tickling sensation, there might be worms, some worms in there, moving around. Okay? But it cause much harm. Okay? If it's inside your, in, inside your colon, inside your intestine, why? Because you have a lot of food there. So the worm just grow up in size. Mm, you have a pet in mm, your color, that's all. Okay? It will not cause you much harm. But if the worm crawl to a different part of the body, that is a different story altogether. 
Why? Because inside the stomach, inside the colon, you have a lot of food that you eat, a lot of nutrients in there, so it's okay. No big deal. If you cross somewhere else, it's a different case. You can grow all the way up to your eyeballs, and you will have a problem we call trachinosis. A parasite infection of the eyeball, something like this. See? Doctor is pulling the worm from the eyeball. Mm. Mm. See? The big worm is quite, quite long, anyway. If you don't put it up, the whole worm will eat your eyeball. So you have no eyeball left, okay? Then yeah, just pulling it. Quite long. Mm, okay? So next time you notice that how come wherever I see there's a lot of clouds, white clouds floating here and there. It might not be white clouds. It might be a worm crawling in front of the eyeball. Okay, you might not even notice that, okay? And if you go a bit higher, where else? The brain, okay, can actually eat out your whole brain. Um, because worms are alive, they need to eat to stay alive. So whatever you have for them is good luck if you have food. No food, they'll eat your own body. They eat up the whole brain. In a way. And brain is the best, best part that worms like most. There's a lot of nutrients, a lot of blood flow. Um, and actually, worms can really grow in your brain. Okay, this is only a picture. I'm going to show you another video by a surgeon. He showed me the video as he operated on Rosemary's brain. Carefully At first, doctor thought she's having a brain tumor. The human body to work next to the brain stem. Here's the lung. At this point, it still looks like a brain tumor. So a brain tumor. So we're just opening up inside. And then the unexpected. When the doctor cut it open, instead of worm, it's actually a worm inside that. Gently tugs it out of Rosemary's brain. It's still alive. You don't hear it on the tape, but Nikaji actually chuckles. Okay, so the first one is worm. Mm, so some people already feel like, look at right? Well, uh, of course, worm itself will not cause much damage. It's still visible, very tiny, it's still visible, but if it goes to a different part of the body, it can cause a lot of damages. But as you can see here, it goes to the brain, it can eat up the whole brain, you'll be brainless. Okay, the second in line is yeast. Okay, yeast is another kind of, we call it, invisible killer. You cannot see with your own eyes, it happens everywhere. Especially if the area is moist and damp. Mm, we call it, you have a lot of yeast. We call it fungus. Mm, yeast is the word, uh, the word that we use for making our bread. We put it yeast in there. The same category like fungus. And what are the causes, I mean, what are the uh, Diseases that this fungus cause. First thing is acute foot. In Chinese, we call Hong Kong gap. The Hong Ki foot, we call it in the way. Why is Hong Ki? It's very simple. Because Hong Ki, if you know someone from Hong Kong, they actually, uh, you can see that they are very diligent. Uh, they are very hardworking. One person, like two jobs, three jobs. And every day they are actually on the on, on street walking, non stop. And they are wearing shoes. So every day, sweating, a lot of Swag inside, accumulated a lot of moist in there, and then they're not changing your socks every day, or uh, because you keep on walking. Okay, what happened? Fungus will grow, and when the fungus grow, whatever you notice after that is not pleasant. Why? As this food that I've been known for the stench, um, the word stench because very smelly. Worse than durian, worse than salty fish. If you don't like it, lah. Uh, if you like it, it's a different story altogether. Uh, the smell is really, really horrible. Um, but the itch, the itch is even worse. Okay? So this will not cause you any harm. Uh, you, you just cause you would be losing all your friends. People will not get close to you. Um, because the moment they get close to you, they already notice that a very peculiar smell coming out from your body. Okay? Then another one is called ringworm. This one is also very itchy. White spots in the body. When you sweat, the moment you sweat, you feel very itchy, it's ringworm. Ringworm is kind of fungus infection too. And for ladies, we have this candida or because infection is around the cervical area. So you have a lot of ladies have a lot of this we call discharge. That is very smelly, sometimes very itchy, sometimes uh, you don't even want to let people know that you're having that. Why? Because when you have the stain on your underwear, so it's very hard to remove. Okay, this we call candida or because infections of the cervical part. These two, these three diseases now will not cause much harm. This is a little bit of skin you kind of irritation most of the time. A little bit discomfort most of the time. Okay, will not cause much harm, but 
Candidate albicans is a little bit serious. Why? When, once ladies get it, if they get pregnant, the baby will be affected. Okay, it can cause abortion too. So this is a bit more serious. But more serious is this, the third one, they call bacteria. Someone, I think most of you know what is bacteria all about. And bacteria is very deadly. Uh, for example, this is we call Komodo dragon, the biggest lizard in the world. You can find it in the Java Island, Indonesia. Okay, so it's very similar to the Malaysian uh, lizard, but ours one is very small. Uh, okay, very small. The other one is very big, uh, and they are the most deadliest creatures in the world. One single bite from this animal, you definitely will die. But when we open the mouth of the Komodo dragon, what do you notice? One bite from this reptile, you will die. But if you try to look closely, when we open the mouth of the Komodo dragon, what do you notice no is missing? No teeth. Yes, no teeth. We know tiger when they bite you, you will die, right? Because the teeth are so long. Sink in, all the blood comes out, right? Or uh, crocodile, a lot of small teeth, or they tear you into pieces. But the Komodo dragon without any teeth. This is like a grandma without the teeth, start chewing on your leg. Do you notice anything? Don't feel pain, okay? You feel very, uh, very funny sensation, right? How can a reptile without any teeth bite you and you will die? No idea, right? Yeah, yeah a lot of bacteria, a lot of poison. No poison because they are not snakes. Oh, they don't have poisons, okay? They have one thing we call saliva. Their saliva contains more than 50 types of disease causing bacteria. So it's very deadly. Um, it's not really the bug that deadly, it's saliva that hits you. Um, why? Because a lot of germs in there. And this germ go into your body, it will just multiply. And how this commodore increase the bacteria in their mouth, they eat a lot of this because crops, that body, all these things, to increase the bacteria. So one tiny, not really bad, like, they just kiss you. Like. Um, okay? Friends kiss you, also you have a lot of germs in your body already. And can be very deadly. So Malaysian version of lizard, not so deadly, but it's not good too. Usually you'll find your lizards near the dustbin, okay? All of decomposing, and you can see a lot of lizards there. Because why? Because they like a lot of bacteria. Because they are asset. It's their weapon to kill. It's their saliva. Okay? And how bad, we call it, bacteria can cause. Okay, I think all of you heard about tuberculosis, we call TB. This is the last time, no cure. Once you get it, you definitely die. Okay, according to the history of TB yourself, in the European country, once you get it, because the last time they don't know whether it's TB or not, no matter what, they notice or suspect you having something like this. Okay, we call coughing until you cough out a lot of blood. Okay, we saw like, a lot of Chinese drama, right? If the character suddenly <coughs> use the handkerchief and cover and then see some blood stay in there, you know that the character will die soon. Oh, no cure for that. Yeah, that's, that's all we know last time. So if you are suspected of having TB last time in European country, they have to burn your whole crops. Okay? Incinerate. Why? Because of the germs. And they believe last time because of superficial type of thinking, they believe that it's not due to bacteria, it's due to vampire. Oh, they bite you, so drain out all your blood. So people who die of tuberculosis, tuberculosis you notice that they're actually very thin. A very big side become thin. Only skin and bones left, and no blood in the body. And that's why they suspect it's vampire last time. It's actually a bacterial infection. And until now, we still have a lot of bacterial infection in Malaysia. For example, this happened in year 2009. Okay, this is the date up there, you can see. Okay, in Malacca, 434 students went to a waterfall, swam, come back, all fall sick. Why bacterial infection? What they have? We call it. Menjako, uh, men, uh, jokoko, meningitis is actually an infection of the brain because of bacteria. And one of them died. Okay, age 24 years old. Very young. Mm, what they did? Swim at the swimming pool and they died. It's going to be very deadly. Another thing, not in Malaysia, this is called E. coli. This is also very strong germs. Uh, not many people heard about it. Once you get it, you know. E. coli is actually the germs that we call bacteria that cause urine tract infection. When you pass urine, you feel that the burning sensation, the trust sensation is actually due to this bacterial. If you go all the way up to the kidney, destroy the kidney, and go into the bloodstream and cause death. Is it really that bad? 
Now back here, this also happened in year 2011. Uh, the date is up there, can I say that? Okay, around seven years back, happened in which country? Germany. This happened in Germany, Germany. What happened that year is, people ate cucumbers, because they didn't wash properly, and this cucumber contains E. coli, the bacteria. So this date is actually May 26, okay? This report in the Star newspaper state that two people died and a few hundred sick due to this E. coli infection. But later on, they found out, few, two weeks later on, in June 10th, 2011, what happened? They found out, oh, it's not the cucumber. The real culprit is actually the vegetable sprouts. But what happens after two weeks? From two people who died, increased to 29. From a few hundred, increased to 3,000 people fall sick to what? E. coli infections. How do you get it? Eating uncooked raw vegetables. It's not in all these, we call it, third world countries. It's in Germany. So Malaysia will have that too. If our sanitation is not so good, Malaysia will have that too. This is a matter of time. Okay? So a lot more, we call type of fever, or salmonella, gastroenteritis, H. pylori. Everything is related to bacteria. But how bad is the situation? I want to bring you some facts here. Uh, this happened in Malaysia. These are top 10 okay, reasons of death in our Malaysian hospital. All these, all these years more or less the same. You can see that the first is cardiovascular disease, heart attack, huh? and then cancer is that, but we have septicemia. So number one, septicemia, and then number two, become number one, 206, and then 2010 uh, is the same thing too. So you can see that septicemia is something that you have to be extra careful. Because in Malaysia hospital, a lot of people die of septicemia. So what is actually septicemia? Anyone knows? No idea. Uh, if you go to hospital, you be extra careful, you might die from this. Okay? You might not die from the original disease you're having, but you might die from septicemia. Septicemia is actually secondary infection. Have you heard about that? You go for operation, the wound didn't heal good, germs go in, the whole body full of germs and you die. That's called septicemia. And these people who are going to get it easily are these three categories. The first category are people who are taking immune suppressing drug. If you go for organ transplant, doctor will give you a drug to suppress your immune. Basically make you no more immune system. So you are very worried, right, uh, we call it fragile, prone to infection. Once you get bacterial infection, you die from the septicemia. Second version is those are very weak immune system, the elderly and the children. That's the reason why the elderly and children are not encouraged to go to hospital. Because hospital has a lot, a lot, a lot of germs. If I have TB, I'm not so sure where I go. I go to hospital. And what I do? <laughs> Call in front of the doctor and see, doctor, do I don't have TB? And the germs start to spread. If you are an adult, your immune system is strong, no big deal. But the problem is, if the children and the elderly, the immune system is not so strong, they will get infected. And they might have the dyslexia too. But these two categories are very minimal in Malaysia. Mostly people get septicemia is due to the third category. Overuse of antibiotic. Or the wrong usage of antibiotic. Okay, I don't talk more about antibiotic because everyone's taking that. I just want to share my own personal story. My mom had four kids. I'm number two. Four also guys. So Doremi, Fa, okay, four of us. Uh, the age gap is around uh, one year to three years most. So what happens in the year 1990, that time when I'm quite young, kids at the time, when you fall sick, you have coughing, bacterial infection, coughing, <laughs> coughing. What happened? Four of them, all, kind of, all of us got coughing. So what happens to my mom? At that time, the fees for uh, doctor consultation around 30 ringgit, not, I'm not so sure, 30 to 40. Uh, not so expensive, but if four kids go for that, uh, to see a doctor, that would be very expensive. So my mom would do something very smart. She will find among the four who's coughing the most intermittent, non-stop, most serious <coughs> that one bring to see doctor. <laughs> Why? Because doctor will give the most strongest drug available. Okay? Simple as that. That's why my mom is very smart. So what happens? Well, antibiotic is meant to be taken one week. So when the drugs come back home, uh, the sick kid will not get one week. They only have two days. Because they need to separate. Okay? To be given uh, in proportion to four of us. So everyone take two days. Of antibiotic. So if you are much better, sorry, no more antibiotic for you. So it will continue, continue. If all the dentists run, run off already, then the second child, still very, very bad coughing, will see the doctor again. So we will continue, continuously doing that way, every time two days of antibiotic. 
until the last one, number four, until the last one, still coughing. Okay, let's send him to see doctor. So to come back, you have one week of antibiotic. Usually, uh, the last one would be the most, we call it uh, lucky. You have one week antibiotic, you will not get that too. Why? Right? But mom also will give two days. If two days are much better, the remaining five days or six days of antibiotic should keep it in the refrigerator. Why? Next time anyone falls sick, you will use back the same antibiotic. So like for the past, I think five, six years back, I went back, the refrigerator still had my antibiotic there, my name is written there. It's more than 10 over 20 years, it's still there, so I asked her to throw away. Okay, if you, do you notice this story look, means sounds a little bit, uh, we call it, um, how to say, applicable to your lifestyle, then you have to be extra careful. Okay, this is called overusage of antibiotic. Okay, and then the worst part is why we should be doing that. A lot of people cannot understand that. Like my mom, I've been telling her, don't keep the drug. Okay, and she said that why? Why don't keep? It's effective, right? And this is the strongest antibiotic I discovered after all these years. Mm. So sometimes one, two tablet it works already. So very bad coughing, just two antibiotic, you'll be okay. You don't have to take one week. She's like the doctor herself. Mm -hmm. So what happens here? Do, I, do anyone know what's the consequences of doing that? My mom said that it saved a lot of money, so nothing wrong about that. It didn't suppress the bacteria. It didn't suppress the bacteria completely. That's the point. Basically, when you're having bacteria in your body, you will not fall sick on the spot. For example, I'm having TB with me. I start coughing. Mm -hmm. You get the bacteria, you won't escape even the back that story. Barbara Chan, the back, you still get the bacteria I'm having. Mm. But the point is, you will not fall sick on the spot because only one or two germs enter your body, you will not fall sick. You need to grow. It's like the worms will grow. From few to be 20, 30, then you feel not much. Then the hundreds over, few hundreds, then you feel a little bit discomfort. Thousands over, ten of thousands, then you fall sick. So when you start to take antibiotic, you will have to kill. From ten thousand, drop to few thousand. Then you feel much better. Second day, few thousand drop to few hundred. You feel much, much better. Then you take a little bit more, from few hundred to 20, 30 lakh. Then you feel that, oh, no symptoms, I feel I'm cured. You felt that you are cured, but you still have some germs in your body. And the problem lies there. Why? If you do not kill it, eradicate it completely, these germs will grow back. When it grow back, sorry, the same antibiotic will not work anymore. So what happens? You develop a super bug. No antibiotic can kill it, then you have septicemia. Why? Because bacteria will keep on growing and growing in the body, and no drugs will work. So you notice at your home, your mom, your mom is still keeping your antibiotic for the past few years, throw it away. Okay, if you want to start on antibiotic, you have to finish the whole course. If not, don't take at all. Simple as that. Okay? Then the last thing on the share is the virus. Uh, I share quite a lot of different invisible killer, and virus are the most deadly. Mm, because virus can kill you within days. TB, you can see the last few years, start coughing until you cough, all the blood only you die. A virus can kill you within a few days. How about SARS before? Two days you die. SARS. Dengue, due to AIDS, every year Malaysians die from this disease. Just mosquito bite, and you die. What else? It's Herpes, hepatitis B and C that cause cancer. And then one more thing, a lot of people didn't even know that virus can cause cancer. For example, Epstein Barr virus can cause nasopharyngeal cancer. HPV can cause cervical cancer. Human papilloma virus. But a lot of people telling me, Charles, oh, I can go for vaccine, right? Do you know what's vaccine all about? Anyone who have vaccine, uh, hepatitis B vaccination? Hepatitis B. One, two, three, four. Five, six, one. So the rest, I'm strong enough, I don't care. Right? Uh, for ladies, HPV vaccination. One. If you are 16, you get it free from the government. Okay? Two. So the rest, I don't bother. Mm -hmm. But first thing comes first, I'm not going to say something bad about vaccination, but do you know what is vaccination? It's the virus itself. Okay? The doctor will actually use the virus, the same virus that causes the disease, to weaken it. Okay, so they will inject the weakened virus into your body, 
hopefully your immune system will be strong enough to produce antibody. If your body are not strong enough, what happens? You get the disease. <laughs> Simple as that. So before you go for vaccination, you must ensure your immune system are strong enough first. Okay, that's the reason why when having flu, fever, not feeling well, don't go for vaccination. Because the immune system is already weak, and then you inject a virus in, even though weakened, you cannot deal with it, then you get sick, you get the disease. There are cases like that. So, vaccination is a prevention thing only when the immune system is strong enough. So, in the end, still come back to your immune system. So, I talk a lot about the germs, virus, bacteria, parasites, okay, to scare you. It's not really that bad. Like. If really that bad, I'm going to be dying right now, right? Oh, why is it still alive? We are still so strong right now because our immune system are very good. Okay, our immune system are very unique. Are separate, our immune system are separated in two lines of defense. There is two ways of protecting our body. So we call the first line and the second line. The first line is very simple. It's our skin. Skin is actually our immune system. It protects from all these germs getting into our body. That's why hygiene is very important. Second, we call the mucous membrane. Anything around our gut, from our mouth to the anus, okay? Because you eat a lot of food, a lot of germs in there, right? If your digestive system have a lot of them, we call it mucus. It will protect you. Mm. That's the reason why we need to increase. We call it probiotic in our body. Mm. Have you taken yogurt before? Now it's like a craze. People like a lot of yogurt, yogurt ice cream. Because why? Because a lot of probiotic in there they help you protect your gut. And second thing, the most important thing about the first line of defense is actually hygiene. So I'm going to see a, uh, a news here. Okay, so have you done that? I've seen people who go to washroom, uh, didn't wash their hand, that's the worst. But there are those who actually go to the sink, turn it on the tap, splash the water, and dry it. From the news just now, you notice that it achieved nothing. Um, you need to have a proper hand washing. You have to use soap, okay? you have to wash your nail, your palm, a lot of things to ensure that your hand is clean from all the germs I mentioned earlier on. Okay, if you are not that hygienic, uh, especially guys and all that, uh, we guys can use soap from head to toes, so that's something very unique. Okay, last time I used to do that. But after that, I know that it's, it's totally not applicable. Why? Because our skin pH is 5.5, need to be a bit acidic. And you use soap, there's something so alkaline in the way, it will cause the skin to be too dry. When your skin is too dry, you will lose the immune system that you used to have, and your skin are prone towards a lot of infections. Okay, so when selecting your personal care type of products, be extra careful with the pH. Um, don't do alkaline. Seven, still acceptable. Eight, also okay. Nine, 10, 11, not good for your skin. The skin needs to be a little bit acidic to kill the germs. Okay, then one more thing, if the first line you are not that hygiene in a way, if germs enter your body, then it depends on your second line of defense. It's all in your blood. Uh, this is something very important. So for those who go for a blood test, you will see that. Our blood actually contains a lot of red blood cells that make the blood red in color, but at the same time have a lot of white blood cells. How come our blood is not white color? Because the amount of white blood cells is very little. You can see that in comparison, okay, one, one cubit of the we call red, uh, blood cells contains 5 to 6 million of red blood cells, but 5 to 10,000 white blood cells only. So you have very little white blood cells in your bloodstream circulating. But this little amount of white blood cells are very, very important. And they have a lot of different versions. Red blood cell, one type. White blood cell, at least five types. And each type are different in terms of their look and their function. Why? Because I mentioned to you earlier on, there are a lot of invisible killer, right? They have parasites, they have bacteria, they have virus. So different type of white blood cells attack different. Germs, 
That's why we must have all of them working in a synergistic way. So how it does it work? I have an animation for you. It's quite funny. Uh, very cute animation. You're gonna see here. So this is our bone marrow. Our bone marrow will produce a lot of stem cell. This stem cell can be converted into red blood cells, the red color one, to bring oxygen. And at the same time, it can be converted into white blood cells, our immune system. And there are a lot of different types. At least five types here, they've shown four types of white blood cells. And the function is very unique. For example, they have the big one. Okay, this big one. Okay, we call it monocytes. Neutrophils, they have a lot in the bloodstream in comparison with the rest. So what they do, this is like police on patrol, they patrol in our bloodstream and see is there any germs. If you've got germs, they will just attack and eat up the germs in the way. Very simple. Then they have a bigger version, they call the macrophage. This is like Rambo. Have you seen the movie Rambo? Uh, Rambo, they work alone. And one person can deal with a lot of germs at one time. So this is like Rambo cell in the morning. Okay? Then we have a very specific Okay, by the cell we call it T cell lymphocyte, whereby they need to detect first before they eliminate. So every germ they need to detect first. Is it my germ? Uh, yes, they will eliminate. If not, they will not simply attack. They call it the T cell. Then we have the B cell. This is the one that produces antibody. Produce a lot of antibody that kills the germs automatically. It's like firing from afar. Mm, you can see that different type, all very cute. Mm. So our body in the of blood contains all these type of white blood cells. So if your immune system is healthy, congratulations. But if you're not healthy, what happens? This will happen. Okay? The most important part about immune system or white blood cells is actually the communication part. A lot of people mistaken when it comes to nutrition, they ask the child what are things to take to make our immune system stronger. So immune system strong is not bad. Too strong is not something good either. If you notice from this video clip earlier on, our immune system works very uniquely. It means that if it's related to my case, if I need to attack parasite, only parasite I will attack. If my job is to kill virus, only virus I will attack. But if you have a very strong immune system, randomly attack, that is a different issue altogether. So when it comes to immune system, our immune system must communicate very well. First thing we need to diagnose or need to, we call it, Make sure the person that we want to attack is something that we do not want. So communication is very, very important among white blood cells. I'll give you a very simple example if communication got problems. What will happen? Hopefully you can listen, uh, can listen to the conversation. Okay, it's by an English teacher. Okay, so this is about the bikes and so on, all of a sudden. So it's a very typical example of miscommunication. So our body has this type of problems almost every day. Mm -hmm. Why do I mean by that? Because every time our immune cells are communicating, it gives you some symptoms. Okay, basically I'm going to let you know, uh, this you don't have to remember, actually the word is called cytokines, the language used by our white blood cells to communicate. So every white blood cell when they communicate, they will speak a certain language. In general, we call cytokines. In particular, we have this interferons, interleukin, tumor necrosis factor. These are the different languages used by the white blood cell to communicate. So I want to go a bit deeper, make it easy to understand. If your communication got problems, 
these are the three things could happen with your immune system. First thing, allergy. I have an allergy. It's quite common, right? Do you know that allergy is actually immune system problems? So I want to ask you, for allergic individuals or those who have an allergy, is their immune system strong or weak? Strong, raise your hand. Weak, raise your hand. So the rest, do not know. Okay, I don't care. Okay, as long as I don't get allergy. Um, a lot of people will have this wrong perception. Sorry to let you know. Um, maybe most of the doctors will be telling you anything you have unresolved is allergy. <coughs> Do you notice that, Mister Lee? <coughs> oh, I have a rush. Use a lot of things cannot heal allergy. Right? Um, then suddenly, since young you can eat seafood, now cannot eat seafood. Why allergy? Young you can drink milk. Now drink milk cannot drink milk. Why allergy? Do you know that it's getting more and more common and then it doesn't make sense? It's like being forced on us. How come suddenly we are so allergic to so many things? Oh, I know that I'm not allergic to money. <coughs> oh, okay? Oh, sorry, I didn't have more of that. So the most important thing about allergy is it's like the immune system go haywire due to miscommunication. Okay? So we start allergy, we have this immune deficiency and autoimmune of the strategy. We start with the allergy first. Allergy, we all know, is hypersensitive disorder. From the reading itself, you don't get any information additional. I want to make it easier for you. What do you mean? If at home, you ask your cat to catch a mouse, I'm sorry, <coughs> sorry. You ask your cat to catch a mouse, and your cat lets you know, the mouse is this big. This big. So you will ask the cat, are you serious? And the cat say, I'm serious, it's this big. So what you do? Are you going to prepare? A trap this big to catch a mouse as described by cat. If you have been doing that, you have allergic reactions. Okay? Basically, what is allergic? Something harmless enter your body. Remember, harmless. Enter your body. Your body do not know what it is. I don't care. Okay? Go and attack it. It's not causing any harm. Go and attack it. It's foreign. Something like the one. Go and attack it. You have allergic reaction. You are overdoing something. Overdoing it. This is called allergy. Okay? An allergy is not uh, inherited. Sorry to let you know. It's not inherited. Um, but you might be, uh, how to say, uh, being told that uh, it's inherited, it's run in the family. It's not. It's your own immune system. Do not know how to differentiate. Something foreign that enter your body is totally harmless. For example, that's how deadly dust can be. So a lot of people, oh, you just need that all. But some people, they develop a lot of allerg allergy reactions because your immune system overreacts for something that is totally harmless to the body. It's a communication problem. Okay? Then it can get very worse. A lot of people say, oh, allergy, no big deal. You can die from allergic reaction. We call anaphylaxis. Anaphylaxis is when your body really overreacts until the moment, to, to the extent that your body can cope with it. You can't breathe. You sweat out your whole body, okay? Then it can cause that. So allergic reaction can be deadly. And due to your immune system, just miscommunicate. Simple as that. The second thing we have, immunodeficiency. This is much more easy to understand. Okay? Immunodeficiency is actually a condition whereby we call your immune system is too weak. Okay? Just now it's like a bit hair wired. Now it's a bit too weak. Okay? Let me deal with that. Oh, wow. Okay. So this is called uh, immune system being too weak. Simple, you get cough, you get flu, it's actually immunodeficiency. When the germs come into your body, your immune system didn't do anything. This is called immunodeficiency and it can get very bad until it develop cancer. Cancer is a very typical condition of immunodeficiency where the immune system do not react when there's a threat. You have a lot of cancer cells in the body, and then spreading throughout the whole body, damaging the whole body, your immune system is not doing anything at all. It's called immunodeficiency. Okay? And the third one is the most interesting one, we call autoimmune disease. When you mean by autoimmune disease, oh, this is much more, uh, we call it entertaining. Why? Because the immune system totally go haywire. Just now, allergy is something foreign comes in, harmless, you react. Immunodeficiency is something bad comes in, you don't react. But this one is even worse, autoimmune. Nothing comes into your body, but your body reacts. This we call autoimmune. What happens? 
The body thinks that your own body is having some problems. For example, notice your joint. The joint doesn't look like my cells, my own cells, so that you don't attack it. Then you have joint problem. We call arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis. The skin, very, wow, very smooth, like baby. Suddenly, your body tells you, oh, the skin is not your own skin. It's foreign skin. So what does your immune system do? Go and attack it. And your skin starts to have psoriasis. Thickening of the skin. Very bad. A lot of diseases, something like this, for example, SLP, systemic lupus erythematosus. Have you heard about SLP before? Maybe you've never heard of it. Seen people be having red smart rashes around the skin, on the face, we call the butterfly rash. This is SLP, typical SLP uh, condition, symptoms in a way. And you having this itself is not anything wrong internally. It's only one thing. The immune system thinks that your skin are foreign object, attack it. You have SLP. Guys have this, we call AK, AS, and you can imagine spondylitis. <coughs> so what is this uh, AS is all about? It's actually the joints, and it attack not only the normal joints, it attack the backbones. So what happens, you have this backbone being hardened, and you form bamboo spine. The whole backbone being hardened. It's all because of immune system, loose hair wire, and then suddenly attack your own self. And these type of people are usually when I talk to a lot of people, especially ladies, go for guys with having this disease. Go for guys with ankylosing spondylitis. And a lot of people will ask me why. Because when your backbone is all being hardened, you only can do one thing. You can only not. You cannot do this. So when you have a boyfriend or husband with that condition, everything you request that he will only not. Buy me a diamond, okay? Buy me a uh, Barry, Barry, Alvin, Barry, Alvin, Barry, what's all I have that one? It's only nodding. Okay, so it's all immune system. So I won't go through all because autoimmune is having, how to say, it's getting more and more, uh, we call it uh, obvious nowadays in our society. Um, have you heard about this now? I mentioned about psoriasis, taking on the skin. So really pity them because no drugs, no medication. Doctor will only give you steroids to suppress your immune system. No medication. Why? Because it's your own immune system go hair warrior. Self attack. Mm -hmm. There's no threat, but your body self attack. So nothing can be done by the medicine doctors. So you have to take care about your own immune system. So how to really strengthen our immune system through nutrition? Uh, this is the best part. A lot of people will ask about nutrition, nutrition and immune system, how it correlates. Okay, because we're not giving you antibiotic. Okay, we're not giving you interferon. All these drugs that give you the immune system. Like even like cancer itself, we are not giving you chemo that kill the cancer cells. We are not doing that. Nutrition is more like tuning back. That's not the immune system. If you really notice all the three allergy, the immune deficiency, and even the autoimmune, it's basically the communication part of the web cells to go haywire. If you tune it back, everything will be perfect. But you mean tuning. It's not adding it up. It's like tuning to the radio. If you listen to... Um, his FM 92.9. So when you turn the knob to, you still not like using, you not use the automatic one, okay? You turn tune 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 92.5. You know, like you might notice that you get to that channel, but it's not so clear. 92.6 are clearer. 92.8 very clear. 92.9 perfect. Then what happens? You go a bit higher. 93, then zzzz, you, don't, you can't have signal anymore. So you must tune it to that optimum level, only then your immune system will be back to normal. So the tuning part is the most critical part. So a lot of people when go to nutrition in a way, the tuning when it starts, they feel weird. How come I feel suddenly like falling sick? Um, I'm already having allergy. Now allergy no more, but I feel like warm, internal warm, like, like having fever. These are the sensations when your body starts to tune. <clears throat> so what are the nutrients? Use during nutrition for our immune system. Very simple. Actually, these are the two things that we actually do. First thing, we actually reduce the burden of the immune system by cleaning or eliminating any germs in the body. At the same time, some toxins in the body, like free radicals, just to clear off all these things that the body do not want to reduce the burden to the immune system. This is the first thing that we do. Second thing, this is the most important one. First thing, increase the communication, improve the communication within the right cells. So the immune system will work very, very diligently at the same time, appropriately. Second thing, the production of the cell. So these basically are the four things that we do, separate into two categories. One is reduce the burden of the immune system, 
Second, increase the immunity function. These are the two things that we do. So what are the nutrients that are very popular in these two? I guess a lot of people will know about vitamin C. Lah. Vitamin C every time, flu, vitamin C, right? Uh, then I don't know to share much because you already know. And then what else? Oh, a lot of germs to kill germs, you know? Tuberculosis, TB. Last time they used one particular food to ward off this TB. What they use? Do you know? Do you remember my story earlier on? Uh, in Western country, they believe there's a vampire sucking people's blood, right? Doing TB. So what they use? They use garlic, correct. Uh, they have hang raw garlic in their house. Okay, why does garlic kill germs? Garlic is a natural antibiotic. Okay, so that one I also don't want to share much because you already know. I'm going to share something that you might not know. The first thing is propolis. Propolis is actually the beehive itself. The outer part of the hive, that's the clay, the resin. Okay, what doctors did before, scientists did before is they put the dead mouse inside the beehive and see, usually something already dead will start to decompose. But what happened? After they open up the beehive and notice the rat become a mummy rat. What happened here? Because the bee actually encapsulated the whole rat with propolis and no germs are found inside the rat, so it will not decompose. Okay? So propolis is a very strong antibiotic but natural, just like garlic. Okay? So you can see that a lot of studies have been done, but it's not so clear here because a lot of studies have been done that have the antibacterial property of propolis in a way. So you can try propolis to kill germs together with garlic. It's very effective, natural antibiotic. Okay, that is the first one. Second thing, reducing burden on body. Killing germs is very simple, these two will do. Garlic, propolis, vitamin C, these are the very basic things that can kill germs in the body. Very good, you're having flu, having coughing, it's very good. Second thing, reduce the burden of the body. We're talking about free radicals. These are the toxins like from uh, radiation from the, uh, from the uh, computer, from the sunlight, too much stress, body produces a lot of toxins, we call it free radicals, and this will damage your immune system. Just to clear it off, you need a lot of antioxidants. Um, to make it simple, is the green tea you heard about? Um, matcha, have you heard about matcha? Uh, people drink less green tea now. Because Matcha is like 50 to 100 times higher antioxidant compared to green tea. I mean, matcha is higher, so matcha is much better version. And then red wine, have you heard about people drinking red wine for health? That's why red wine is so good, because it contains a lot of antioxidants. If you are not so keen on matcha or on red wine, what you can take? Take different type of vegetables and fruit that's rich in different colors. Okay, like mangosteen is purple. Okay, purple, is it purple? The skin is purple, the, the flesh is white, a lot of people tell me, oh, when I ask them to eat purple, oh, they go for my mango seed, my mango is purple, but yeah, it's purple, the one you eat for purple, yeah, it's purple, no, la, the flesh is white, the skin, the ring is purple, except you, except you eat the ring together, it's a different case, okay, white is actually very minimal, you must find those very bright colors, okay, of fruits, like pomegranate, uh, like our Chinese dragon, dragon, dragon fruit, the purple one, not the white one, uh, is very strong in colors. Mm, the brighter, the more brilliant the color, better, stronger antioxidants. Again, go for local fruits if possible. Because papaya. papaya is good, beta carotene, because of the durian. yellowish orange color that is beta carotene, it's very good. Durian! <laughs> <laughs> yellow, very bright. Yes, yellow, very bright. Sunken, right? Uh, this, that, that. So, durian uh, does contain, sincerely, even the green, the chlorophyll from the plant is also antioxidant. Durian has that too, but uh, has a, a lot of other things like you might not want. Okay? Um, it's okay, la. I think durian season is here, so people are so keen on durian. But people don't go for durian for antioxidants <laughs> because you can see the flesh is not that bright in colors, quite dull. You must find fruits that are very bright in colors. Okay, that is good. Mm, antioxidants. It prevents cells from turning into cancer cell. Protect our cell in a way. So that's why it's very important. Okay? So killing the germs and protect ourselves are the basic things you can do. Then we we'll go a bit deeper. Before that, we'll see some of the uh, fruits that I mentioned earlier on. You can, you can try. Actually, if you really want to know more about antioxidants, you can check on their ability. We call the ORAC value. The stronger the ORAC, the stronger the antioxidants. You can see that mostly it's all the berry, 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 berry at the top. 
Okay, have the uh, uh, zai berry, wild blackberry, wild berry, blueberry, elderberry, red raspberry. All those berries are very strong. Mm, okay, then uh, in in our Asian country, you can go for goji. Goji also very strong. Gaiti. Ah, uh, goji is also very strong. Okay, antioxidants. Mm, so all these things are very bright in colors, are very strong antioxidants. Good for health. Okay, protect ourselves from turning to cancer cells. Then second part, this is much more important, about communicating. How we can communicate, and then the amount of vitamins that we produce. Uh, if you look here, omega-3. Omega-3 coming from fish oil is also very important, because study has shown, nutrient analysis has shown that fish oil that contains omega-3 can improve cell recognition. That means this fish oil, this omega-3, will attach to the surface of the cell, so it can differentiate between normal cells and cancer cells. It helps a lot. So omega is a daily nutrient you should be taking every day. Mm -hmm. Later on you can ask me about your cooking oil later on. Because I know a lot of people having some questions already about cooking oil. Later on you can ask me, good oil is essential for our health. Okay. One of the reasons why it helps on the surface of the cell, helps our immune cells to differentiate between normal cells and abnormal cells. It's very important. Then another thing that you might not heard of is ace manant. Ace manant is actually a very important nutrient whereby it helps our immune cells to communicate. Remember the interferon, tumor, necrosis factor, interleukins, the language that our white cells speak is actually can be pro I mean can be improved by this ingredient called ace manant. Where can you find it? Aloe vera. Okay, aloe vera contains ace manant. It's a kind of sugar from aloe vera that produces this communication in our white blood cells. Okay, a lot of studies, um, of course it's not so clear. Another study is done, okay, also x manan using aloe vera. Okay, it, ha it works against viral infection in animal and human. Works so well on communication. So I really like aloe vera because of the x manan. And then besides x manan, another one that is very popular right now is beta glucan. Um, a lot of people taking a lot of oats nowadays. Mm, and they don't promote as food, they promote beta glucan. Mm, in Mandarin, beta bu ju tang. Uh, have you had any scraps? Any on your memory? If you go to the pharmacy, you see a lot of oats selling this already. Beta glucan. Beta glucan is very similar to the eggs manna that I mentioned earlier. It's a kind of sugar found in wheat, uh, found in a lot of barley in a way. Whereby this beta glucan, same, it also helps our immune cells to communicate. A lot of studies have been done, including Harvard Medical School or National Cancer Institute, to see how effective it is in helping our immune cells to communicate. It works very, very well. So where can we find beta glucan? It's manner you can find in aloe vera. Beta glucan you can find in a Chinese herb, very popular, we call Lingzi Ganodema. Okay, that's the reason why Lingzi has been used in all immune system related type of diseases. It can strengthen the immune system, strengthen the way our immune system self communicate. This is the Lindsay. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then now uh, in a uh, bit northern part of Asia, we call Siberia, they have Chaga, C H A G A. It's a kind of a fungus too, something like Lindsay. It's fun Lindsay is a fungus. But this Chaga is also a fungus. So this is like a burn charcoal sticking on the birch tree, you call it. Okay? So this is also a very strong, what we call it, fungus that contains a lot of beta glucan. Improve our immune system. A lot of studies have been done. Okay, chaga mushroom. Antioxidative and then contains a lot of beta glucan in there. What else? Another Japanese, they like this. They call the maitake mushroom. Maitake mushroom, according to the Chinese and to the Japanese mostly, they are the king of all mushrooms. Why? Because it contains a lot of beta glucan. And it's been written in their herbology and medical, uh, we call it the booklet, on, on how well this maitake is used for immune system boosting because of the beta glucan compound. Okay, it's called the king of mushrooms. Okay, a lot of research has been done. These are the research done, okay, especially on cancer cases. So beta glucan is very important. So it's recommended for you to eat a bit more mushrooms.
Mm, that's the reason why you can see that nowadays they are having more and more fresh mushroom available in the supermarket nowadays. And their promoting is very healthy. Why? Because it helps your immune cells to communicate. That's very important. Okay, if those who like a lot of mushroom, continue taking. Remember, raw mushroom, not those pre-dried mushroom. Mm, the Chinese will have the pre-dried version, right? And when you look at the efficacy, it's totally different. Raw mushroom will be the best. Fresh mushroom will be the best. Okay, one last thing, just now I mentioned about propolis, right? It helps you kill germs. At the same time, propolis also very good. If you're keen, you can type under Google Scholar and you type propolis and then add cancer. you find a lot of research on that part. Because why? Because propolis also helps our body cells to communicate better and boost a lot of rainbow cells, we call the NK cells in the body. If you remember from the video just now, there's one big guy in Taiwan people, we call the NK cells, natural killer cells. The populace can boost that even higher. So that's why it's very, very important. So the last part about the whole talk itself is this. A lot of people have heard about talk like this. Wow, oh, this is good, that is good. Lindsay is good, I go back and eat a lot. Right? A lot of you have that sensation. Oh, mushroom chow si is good, I go back and down one big bag. <laughs> uh, people have that perception. The, the reason about uh, I'm sharing all, the, all this thing is to let you know a bit more. But comes to basic, nutrition is not about having too much or too little. Just like you missed this, I mentioned, you need to tune it well. So it's really based on your health conditions. Okay? So it depends on what you really need. Mm, don't overdo it. Overdo it, something might not be good for you too. Just tune it back in a way. And immune system is very unique, like I mentioned earlier on, because when you're not sick, you don't think that it's important, and you don't even know how well you are right now with your immune system. So take good care, and once in a while, do want to check from the blood test report to see what blood cells are. Then you roughly have some idea how well is your immune system. So today, I kind of share quite a lot of information about all these invisible killers I mentioned about. The first thing is the virus, very bad. Then we have the bacteria, we have the fungus, and we have the parasites. Then we talk about immune system. Our body has two lines of defense. The first line of defense is actually our skin and the mucosal membrane in our guts. And the second one is the white blood cell in the body. So as long as these two are doing well, communicating well, then you shouldn't be having any problem at all. Okay, vaccination depends on your needs. Uh, if you want to go, please make sure you're healthy first. Okay, if you're sick, don't go for vaccination. So I end my talk with a very simple story. Uh, this story I like it a lot. Why? Because a lot of people uh, try to come to nutrition and hope for a miracle pill. It doesn't happen that way. Anything that I take, I can boost my immune system. I said, uh, there are something you can take, but how to take, when to take is very important. So usually I will end my talk with this question, uh, this story. This story is very simple. You heard about the story between the race between the rabbit and the tortoise. Right? Who won? The tortoise won, right? Why the tortoise won? Because the rabbit sleep, took a nap. Uh, actually, that is the different version. My version is different. So that version, uh, my version is very simple. The tortoise is actually, why the tortoise want to race with the rabbit? Because the tortoise cannot accept it anymore. Because the whole, I mean, the whole jungle, all the animals keep on pestering this tortoise, keep on, uh, we call it, accusing the tortoise the slowest animal in the whole jungle. So this tortoise will be a little bit sad, like, of course. So in the, in the end, he's so determined to prove to the, all the animals that he can run. So he find this rabbit. So Mr. Rabbit, okay, do you mind me to compete with you in the race? Okay? And the rabbit said, you want to compete with me? You are a tortoise, you are very slow. Yeah, I'm the tortoise, I'm going to uh, race with you because you are known as most fastest among us. And the rabbit said, yes. And the, the day when the whole, uh, we call it, the whole competition starts, and the journey is about to start, and the rabbit start speeding all the way towards the end and disappear, the tortoise started the journey. Inside the tortoise heart, he knows that oh, he cannot win uh, for sure. Mm, I'm so slow. But I want to prove that I can complete the whole journey, the whole race. So he start to crawl, 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 crawl for one hour, kind of exhausted, kind of fatigued that time. So when he did, just look up and see anyone around. Oh, can I see the rabbit? Oh, God. Then see no one. Oh, saw the goat there. So he just asked Mr. Goat, Mr. Goat, Mr. Goat. So happy asking the goat. So Mr. Goat answer back. That's it, tortoise. Oh, you know that today I'm racing with the rabbit? Yeah, the whole jungle knows about it. You're silly. No lah, I'm not silly lah. I want to prove that I can, I can win too. And the goat start laughing. You can win, you're a tortoise. How can you win? 
and then it's left. So the tortoise with that itself feel a little bit embarrassed, uh, ashamed, at the same time, angry too. Mr. Goldson, you don't believe me, I can win, now I approve to you. So he's even more determined to crawl another hour. So two hours pass. What happened? The whole body ache. All the joints ache. And then he look up. Where's the finishing line? Uh, I don't want to look for the I want to look for the finishing line. It's nowhere to be seen. So he start to wonder, uh, am I going to finish the race? So he look around for someone to ask for assistance, for advice. And he saw Mr. Carl at the side. So Mr. Carl, Mr. Carl, this time is not so determined, not so courageous already. And ask Mr. Carl, Mr. Carl, I want to ask you a question. What is it, Tortoise? You see that I'm panting already, I've been running for two hours. But yeah, I know that today you are racing with the rabbit, right? Yes, yes, yes. So what do you want to know? Uh, I want to know, Mr. Kao, do you think that I can finish the race? Uh? Then the car asked the Tortoise, How long have you been running? I've been running for two hours, you know. Until my whole body ache. So where you start? And then the Tortoise turned back, then from there. So what the car did, didn't say a single word, walked to that. Beginning line, I walk back. And then ask the tortoise, do you see what I did to you? And I mean, show to you earlier on? So this kind of not getting the point. So can you direct, let me know what happens? Why you walk there and walk back? You use two hours to walk from there to here. I use less than five seconds to walk from here to there and back to here. With that speed, do you think you can finish the whole race? And the truth sinks. And the topic felt that it's impossible for him to finish the whole race and he started to cry. And he started crying, 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 and then he all heard a voice from both. Tortoise, tortoise. He thought it's an angel. And then he looked up, is that an angel? Uh, is the angel going to help me here? I said, Where's you, angel? I cannot see you. I said, Tortoise, tortoise, why are you stopping? Well, I'm stopping because the cow being so truthful, saying that I'm so slow, and the good laugh at me, la. that's why I want to stop, or I want to continue the race. I said, who said that you are very slow? Then you start to look up, and the sound is a bit more uh, similar, I mean, similar to another type of animal. I said, is it you? Yeah, you're the angel. I said, well, I'm not angel. So what are you? What are you? I said, uh, actually, I've been on your back for so long. Uh -huh. So what are you? And the escargot <laughs> on top of your back. So why are you staying up there? I've been standing up there for months already. So uh, it's just that notice that you're not so happy. So I just provide some advice, lah. So what advice you can provide me? You're even slower than me, right? What advice you can provide me? No, 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 no. You are very fast in a way. Are you sure or not? Yeah, I'm very sure. You're very fast. So how long you been on my back? A few months already. So you know, lah, from the first moment I. I speed up, when you see that rabbit speed up and I start crawling for two hours. Yes, I noticed that. So tell me frankly, tell me frankly, Asghar thought, am I really that slow? And Asghar told him something very, very unique. Do you know what, Tontius, the moment you step up for the race itself, I'm sitting on top of the back, it's like I'm driving a Ferrari. You are very fast. So you are not slow at all. Just continue, you can win it. With that itself, the thought is continue, and then you want, okay? Well, that's my version of the story, but uh, no big deal, because no one can think of it, okay? <laughs> it's no big deal, because the story I want to share with you. That story is very unique to me. Uh, it's a way of me telling people about nutrition. Some people, your body is different. Your health level is different. Some people are very fast when they are dealing with their health. They do some minor changes in their lifestyle and diet, boom, they see a lot of results already. Or oh, they might be the rabbit. Okay? Do some minor changes, they are very good. But some people are like all this, okay? You have to accept that. You might be a bit slow, not seeing much. But the most important thing is ask the right person. Don't simply ask around. If you ask the good, maybe your husband or your wife, your spouse, you see that chance are uh, I've been telling my husband, you know, I've been doing all these things, uh, she laughed at me. Oh. So many years seeing you also like that. Two, three months you want to see changes are uh, impossible. So yeah, two, three months is impossible to make much changes. But along the way, you will see improvements. So you must ask the right person. Uh, some people are too truthful to like your good friend, your buddy. Yeah, like few months, like then few months you're doing this, I don't see much changes. I'm used to your old self, I don't change. Um, like people are doing a lot of alcohol, like the Chinese. But yeah, don't worry, like, just drink. La. How many years you're going to last with the, in this world? Just drink, I don't think. They are being very truthful. Why you want to be so healthy? You're not sick yet, nah? Enjoy life while you still can. 
Some people are very truthful, but they're hurting you without you realizing it. So in terms in terms of nutrition, you have to ask the escargot. Uh, escargot will be whom? Will be me, lah. Uh, okay. So ask the right person, you will get the right advice. And the most important thing, you must ask someone who been with you on this journey on health. Someone who are health conscious. Someone who knows about what they are doing and what you need in a way. Only then you get the best advice. Okay. So my talk will end here. So I will straight away. Let me see how much time we have. Oh, I have 10 more minutes left. So for Q&A questions. Any questions from the floor? Yes. Yes. So, yes. I mean, I'm sure that you can go to any one of our houses. Like, it's a mm. different type of, uh, you know, uh, yeah. kids. So you can see vitamin C, calcium, garlic. I think most of us keep a lot of these. Okay. But uh, usually, you start to you go to the pharmacy. Pharmacy is saying, you know, this one is good for your health. You know? Yes. Try to consume it, and after a while, you hmm. you decided not good enough. You know, you change another type, you change another okay. type, right? Versus multivitamins, right? So I know people are lazy. Mm. When you go to a pharmacy, they take one 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 tablet of multivitamins, it will last you the whole day. Yes. So what is your you know advice on that? Okay, so I separate into two uh, questions. First is about individual nutrients, which is the best. Right. How do you know that it works? The second one is taking multivitamins. Is it really work? Okay. So first thing I want to know: any pharmacies here? <laughs> no, because in my shop of pharmacy, I need to ask first. No, no, I can be very straightforward. If you felt offended, okay, it's not my intent. I mean, it's not my real intention. Okay. So what happens first thing when you go to a pharmacy to look for a supplement? Actually, you look for the wrong person. Because the pharmacy they don't study nutrition. To make it very simple, the cell you can tell that fish oil, the vitamin B complex, the vitamin C they have a variety there. So when they ask them which is the best, they will show you this one. Why? Commission is the highest. <laughs> simple as that. Right? Because they don't even know which one is good because they are selling all the other brands. Yeah, they don't study nutrition, to them it's the same. When you say see synthetic or natural, it's the same. It's the ascorbic acid. So basically, first thing we don't go to the pharmacy, look for individual nutrients, and it's very simple. Uh, the question that you need to ask a pharmacist or even nutritionist is how long I need to stick this nutrient to see improvement, and how to measure that improvement. It's very important. It's like doctor prescribing medication, you need to come back to see the doctor because the doctor need to assess you whether the medication is effective or not. Same with nutrition. It takes a bit longer, like I said, because it's not drug. But you will see some improvement along the way. And that uh, practitioner should be able to advise you. If you're on this nutrient, what are the sensations it's going to be like? And then how you're going to see improvement and what is going to be good for you in the end. So these are the questions we need to be asking. So how long you need to be taking that product and how to measure improvement, whether it's effective for you. Okay? The second question is about multivitamins and minerals. Then we have to look into different types of supplements. Supplements, they have different function. The most basic is called fundamental nutrients. It's like multivitamins and minerals. You can see multivitamins in the market or a protein powder, a protein shake. They have all the nutrients in there. This is called fundamental nutrients. What do you mean by that? It means that when you're taking this, it's not, you're not eating much of the food, it's still okay. It will give you fundamental nutrients. So you will not have any nutrient deficiency type of diseases, but it doesn't mean that you have sufficient nutrient. Because they have all the nutrients at the most minimal amount. The most minimal amount. Um, not the, the amount that you really need in a way. So like I said, for those who are lazy, multivitamins it sounds very easy, applicable, but it's not the best way. Because you don't even know what you need. It's just taking abundance of everything in a very minimal amount, hoping that it works. So if you are perfectly healthy, taking that, no problem. Fundamental. If you're having some health issue, fundamental nutrients will not help much. Just a very good example, vitamin C. 60 mg is the one required <coughs> by RDA. 60 mg, what it does? Prevent you from having scurvy. You brush your teeth, you don't bleed. If you have a flu, you need 1,000. So 60 and what is so much of difference. And one more thing, if you are a smoker, one cigarette is already 60 gone. So it really depends on your needs, on what you are taking. That's why vitamin C, they have the high dose, 5,000, 1,000, 2,000, they have the 60 um, version. Depends on your needs. Okay, a lot of people think, then I take more, I don't care. I don't have any problem, I take 1,000, I take 5,000. 
it will cause kidney stone. Nutrient too much your body need to excrete it out because for this is water soluble. If you're not using that much, you don't take that much. It will cause harm to your body. Okay? So fundamental nutrients works for those who are already healthy, health conscious, no problem. Having some health issue, fundamental nutrients will not give you much effects. And a lot of my clients, when I go to their home, I was so shocked, whole cupboard filled with supplements. Mm -hmm. And supplements are not meant to be kept in the cupboard. Okay? And they are meant to be taken. So you know that if you take three months, uh, you bring prescribed three months, if it works until this level, three months don't see, fine, just shift to another one. It means that the nutrients is not giving that result that you're looking for. Okay? And then, whatever left is either you pass to someone else or let it expire, throw it away. Just don't keep it. Mm. Okay? Right there, thank you. Okay, any more questions? How bad is cholesterol? What's it? How bad is cholesterol? How bad is cholesterol? Cholesterol is not bad, first thing comes first. Cholesterol is generated by one body. And if you don't have cholesterol, you don't have male and female hormones. So you will not have ladies, you will not have gentlemen. All look like the same, more all everything, all, everyone is aqua, okay? So in between. So you need cholesterol in our body. Its problem is a lot of people mistaken. Just looking at the amount of cholesterol they consume, they forgot the amount they body produce. This is very important. To extract that balance, the first thing you need to look at the cholesterol level from blood test, there are five readings. Total cholesterol, good one, you call HDL, and then bad LDL. And then the triglyceride, the oil in the bloodstream, and the last one is the ratio of total cholesterol over HDL. So if you do not know all the reading, look for the last one, the ratio. If the ratio is below 5, then the blood vessel is quite clean. No need to worry. Okay? But a lot of people are so concerned about cholesterol, it's the LDL one. Because LDL one is not related to your diet. If you're not eating any oil at all, the LDL one will not drop. Okay? So like my god sister, uh, total cholesterol is 7, LDL is around 4. So very high. So she starved herself, almost died. Okay, no lah. Two one month plus two months plus and go and check, we check again, no drop at all. Not a little bit. It's still four point something, plus is almost seven point something. And then she need to be on medication. And I told her not necessary. I told her not necessary. Why? Because it's your body producing too much bad cholesterol. Then she said, Chao Sir, why are you telling things that I do not know what you're talking about? Everyone are talking cholesterol are very bad. And now you are telling me my cholesterol is 7 over, no big deal. It sounds so contradicting. So I told her, you need to see, LDL production, this bad cholesterol is not really that bad. Okay? For you all to understand, I try to make it as simple as possible. Okay? But if you really cannot understand, then it's okay. Just accept this is a different, uh, different language I'm talking. Okay, maybe talking French. If you can accept, it's a good thing for you. LDL. You don't produce one LDL. This LDL to carry cholesterol to the brain. If it goes to the brain, resolve a liver don't have to produce anymore. But if the same LDL I produce one from the liver, go halfway in the heart area, congested or maybe accident, get clots there, too much of free radicals. So what happens? The brain didn't receive the cholesterol. The brain will send signal to the liver, hey, my cholesterol didn't arrive. So what the liver do? Thus, the liver produces the second LDL to send cholesterol all the way. And that block same area. The brain also didn't receive it. So the liver produces the third, the fourth, the fifth. That's why the LDL keep on increasing. And in the end, everything clutch. And we blame LDL. LDL clutch our blood vessel. LDL are not meant to clutch our blood vessel. It's only LDL matched with the bad free radicals, the toxin in the body that oxidize the LDL, become sticky. Only then it clutch. So your resolution is not reducing LDL. It's clearing of body of the free radicals. Okay? No free radical, no oxidation, blood circulation will be good. LDL will don't the body do not need to produce that much LDL. Get the point? Okay? It's very simple, just like your oil. You buy fresh from the supermarket, it's very liquid, okay? And then when I mean, you I mean, take it in, like extra virgin olive oil, it's like watery, it's not sticky, right? But when you cook it, what will happen? It becomes sticky. This is called oxidation. 
Now LDL originally would be like your extra virgin olive oil, very smooth, very watery in a way. But with mixed meat, free radicals, toxin, you smoke a lot, a lot of stress, drink a lot of alcohol, it becomes sticky. When it becomes sticky, it gets stuck, it didn't reach to the destination, your body has to keep on producing more and more LDL. And that's the best case. Okay? Question? Yes. Uh, You're acid. Yes. Yes. True, it's fish in purine. You have the joint problem. Yeah, yeah. Can you can you can achieve that? So first thing comes first, your acid and immune system is two different functions. Okay, the immune system is all the flu fever thing. But your immune system, your white blood cell will not attack your uric acid. Your acid is produced by the body. So uric acid is more like a circulation problem. When everyone will have uric acid, you will not have zero. It's just that uric acid tends to store at the joints more, forming gout, forming the pain, discomfort in a way. It's just the cleansing part is not so good. And maybe from the food intake, too much of uric acid. The one you mentioned is high in purine, the uh, mushroom you mentioned, soya, all these things. Okay, at the same time, all the red meat, all the internal organs, all the seafood also under high in uric acid too. When you consume too much, your body cannot excrete it up, get sedimented at the joints, only then you have problems. So it's more about eating less, this is one thing. But the more important is cleansing. And the cleansing is actually about your kidney. All your acid is uh, passed through your urine itself. So your kidney function must be good. In order for the kidney function to be good, your heart and blood circulation must be very good too. Why? Because kidney is just a filter. It filters your blood. And the flow of the blood is actually from your heart. If your heart circulation is not so good, then you have problems at the same time too. So for your case right now, we don't focus on urine acid. Why? Because if you're taking lesser, you still have sedimentation here, it will not resolve. You need to focus on blood circulation. To make sure your blood is not so thick, because a lot of people think that blood is being thick is only cholesterol. Not only that, your sugar can make your blood thick. Uric acid can make your blood thick. A lot of things can make your blood thick. And when the blood is very thick, the flow will be slower. Just like a, a bottle of soya sauce and a bottle, bottle of ketchup. Soya sauce can flow very easily from the bottle. But ketchup being too thick, viscosity too high, is very hard for it to flow. And it will get sedimented. So to make sure your blood is well, we call it not so thick, there are a lot of things to do. You did the blood test, right? You can go through that. Yeah, then you go through that. If uric acid only one, then you focus on uric acid. Uric acid needs something very alkaline to do. The name is uric acid. To neutralize it, you need something alkaline. Alkaline is actually in nutrients, it's all the minerals. Yes, all the minerals coming from what? Vegetables. Okay, vitamins coming from most of the uh, fruits that we consume, minerals coming from vegetables. But the right type combination, then it will be much better. You have to dissolve the uh, acid and you can pass through your urine in a way. So that is actually a different system for the body, the circulation. So I have to take a treatment. Yeah, then you know better what is actually the one that causing your blood to be so thick. Some people is actually uh, too much of dead cells. That means your body is not regenerating a lot of new blood. You have a, a lot of old blood. Your blood also very thick. Like maroon color people. Some people when they take the blood out, it's not red, it's like maroon color. The blood is also very thick because of a lot of dead cells in there. Blood regeneration too slow. And that also will cause problems too. For the blood circulation type of symptoms. So, what would be like mm -hmm. encourage to blood circulation or like thick, uh, thick, uh, thick, right? Yes. The opposite of thick blood. Thick tin? Less than thick, less than reduced viscosity. Oh, drinking water itself is uh, not the right way. Drinking water is not right. Drinking water is only 50%. You need to have the 50%. For example, if you're having diarrhea, Lack of water, very dry, and then or no water. Doctor will give you what? Doctor will gonna give you water. Doctor will give you salt. Yes, salt is all the minerals I mentioned earlier on. Because only salt water can help you retain water in the body. That's why you need minerals. Um, just drinking plain water will not help. And another very good analogy is when walking on the beach. You notice that when you walk on the beach, you know, when your foot, when your feet touch the sea water, what will happen? After a while, wrinkles, right? Mm. Uh, a lot of people do not understand what happened that way. 
If you compare water, the sea has more water or my body has more water? The sea has more water, right? But why my water still drain up from my body to the sea? Because the sea has more salt. Salt will attract absorb water. That's why it dry up, wrinkles. So if you want to have water in your body, you must have enough salt. No salt, no water. Okay, just drinking plain water, you just go to washroom, pass more urine, that's all. You will not get back the water into your bloodstream. So that's why you need a lot of minerals. But of course it's not like just jamming on, go back on table by table of salt, you start eating, okay? That's not the way. Uh, just give you an idea. Uh, you must find the right balance, what you really need. Okay, if you want to have more water in your bloodstream, you need to have salt. No salt, your body cannot retain the water. Yeah, it's pretty thick, man. So it's just flowing out. Oh, it's not flowing out. Okay, that, that's actually contribute to the overall your body. But of course, through just like this, I cannot say for sure. Well, if you have a report, it will be much easier. We need to see what are the things that is contributing to the thickness of the blood itself. If it's sugar, then you have different way to tackle the sugar. If you it's it, uric acid, you have different way to tackle the uric acid. Okay? Yeah. Question? Improve function of the kidney. Uh, basically, uh, kidney is like a filter. Uh, our, our filter at home is easy. We just do some maintenance. We just uh, exchange. I mean, because uh, we, we clean the filter sometimes, and then if it already expired, then we just change the filter. But our kidney cannot do that. <laughs> okay? So, what you need to do, the first thing we all know that blood is going to be filtered by the kidney. If your blood is clean, so the damage or the burden to the kidney it would be lesser. So, the first thing is maintaining a blood not too thick. Okay? Second thing, a lot of people also worry, taking too much salt will cause kidney damage. Then, just now Charles mentioned that I need a lot of salt, so it's like very contradicting. So like I mentioned to you, I'm talking to you is about minerals. Uh, the salt you're taking is only sodium chloride, the white salt. There's only two minerals in there. If you only take these two, these two will be accumulated too much in the body and that will cause problems. If you're taking a variety of minerals, a variety of salt, that's a different story. That's why I mentioned to you, I'm not taking you, I think take salt, I'm taking vegetables. Vegetables will have all the minerals, the magnesium, the natrium, sodium, potassium, chloride, fluoride, everything in there, that is a different case. That will not cause kidney burden. If you're only taking only the white salt, it will cause kidney burden. Okay, so taking from much more, from food lah, in a way, is much a better version. And water intake is definitely important. And the last thing, kidney, uh, will, to protect kidney is your blood pressure. Okay, because blood pressure damages the kidney very badly. Um, so your blood pressure must be on good level or as well. If not, it will increase a lot of this additional burden to the kidney. And then sugar, all these things I don't have to mention, is blood is toxicity. As long as your blood is thick, it's not good for the kidney. Simple as that. Yes, Jenny, any question? Yes. Lemon. Uh, in terms of antioxidants. Um, if lemon is that you take the skin of the lemon for the yellow, then it's okay. But you're taking the only the juice is not much itself. And lemon, yeah. Lemon juice. Um, since Jenny, I think that uh, it's very common. Uh, a lot of people having this wrong perception. Uh, lemon is very healthy, so every day lemon juice or two slices of lemon in the water, like lemon is like, uh, we call it uh, the, the ambrosia of health. So if you take that, you'll be very healthy. No such thing, first thing comes first. Okay? No such thing. And I want to share another thing, then you have the idea. Oat. I really cannot understand. When people force it, they would have to eat, take a lot of oat. Breakfast oat, lunch dinner, all oat. It's like, oat, the moment you're sick, you take oat, you'll be healthy again. I do not know why, where it comes from, that, that concept. Uh -huh. I know oat is okay, it helps to lower a little bit of cholesterol, contains a little bit better glucan. But there's no such thing that when you're sick, you take oat, you'll be healthy. A lot of people say, oh, I'm, not, I'm sick, so I eat oat. What's the, what's the correlation? Okay, why do you need to take oat? Not much nutrients in oat. Oat is more like our rice. Yeah, so no big deal. Same thing. You're taking rice, you're taking oat, it's the same thing. It's just that a lot of people feel that I'm taking oat, I'm healthier. I'm supposed to get healthy when I take oat. Same applies to lemon. <laughs> okay? First thing, lemon is not locally produced. It's from overseas. 
So when they start to deliver the lemon over, the way they see the nutrients that start to deteriorate or diminish slowly. So when rich Malaysia, then it's sent to the supermarket, then you have to wait until 99 per piece, only you buy. So most of the nutrients are all gone. <laughs> True. Just because of you all, uh, lemon is getting more and more expensive. <laughs> it used to be only 99 cents. It's like now it's reaching to 2 ringgit. One double the amount. Because people are like, oh, oh, oh go, go on the band naked and start eating lemon. Well, no big deal about lemon. This is a fruit. Just a fruit. And the oxygen level is not really that high. Mm, okay, so uh, if you want to just add in to water to give you the extra boost of taste, it's okay. But don't expect too much by, by a slice or a lemon a day. Not much. Not much. Okay? It's not a bad thing, but it doesn't give you that much of a benefit as claim. Okay? Yes. Yes. Yeah? In terms of nutrition, yes. In terms of taste, it's different. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. It's going to be better. Mm. Because everyone feels that the moon, I mean, the grass on the other side is greener, the moon is bigger overseas. So because all this is coming from overseas. Mm. Yes. Not, not many people do research on local fruits. That's the reason. And our local fruits research, actually, what happens? You wouldn't be that like that. When you have seen something locally, you don't feel proud of it. Uh, from overseas, you don't think you're very hard to get, then you feel that it's much better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, uh, with the seeds, yes. you know that the uh, yeah. lemon water people uh, mm -hmm. uh, they can get the seed you know, similar to how to one of the people. So, uh, I mean, mm -hmm. what is the, uh, you know, what do you see? Like, people talk about online water, yeah, it goes to the house, you know, is it, uh, is it a true thing? Okay, true. Um, and talk about this, this topic itself can drag on for hours. Okay, I try to shorten it as much as possible. Alkaline water, there are a few types of alkaline water in the market. Firstly, the most common one is the mineral water. Hi, mm, it's the mineral water. They contains all the minerals they take from the uh, underground water. A lot of minerals. Okay, the calcium, potassium, all these things. This is called alkaline water. It's very good for health. Because this is the thing that we want. The minerals and these minerals have alkaline property, just like I mentioned to the sister earlier on. If you have uric acid, you need alkaline, you can take vegetables. Oh, this type of mineral water it will help. And then there are another type of alkaline water whereby it's using electrolysis. They mean to use electric to separate the water, H2O water molecule, to separate to OH negative and H plus positive. H plus is acidic water, OH negative is alkaline water. So you have a machine that separate the water into two, so you can have the tube drain out, the acid you don't drink, alkaline you drink, this is called alkaline water too. And this version is not that healthy. Why? Oh, a lot of people are so shocked already. Oh, you might be having that machine at home. Okay? So, because what happens here? Because the H2O is a stable molecule, the water is stable that way. But you use electric to break it into two. So this OH negative and H plus got a charge, electric charge there. So it's not stable.